Every village in the Ivory Coast has an area of the nearby forest where the spirits of their ancestors live. It is the sacred forest of each group, a place which is taboo for strangers. Here, the young men are brought to be initiated, circumcisions are carried out, they speak to the masks of wisdom, and justice is imparted. In the sacred forest of the Dan villages, the great Glewa mask dances to the frenetic rhythm of this primitive percussion orchestra. has tubular eyes and a large mouth. It is invoked to resolve problems of justice or important matters that affect the entire community. It is a mask of peace and for this reason is greatly revered. The women dance to worship it and to ask for its blessing its decisions are final. Any who disobey them are punished and die, poisoned by the executioners of the Gore Secret Society. Virtually all the forest on the Ivory Coast is burnt down once a year. To defend themselves from the animals that lie in waiting, ready to attack the villages, or in order to plant new crops, they set a light to the forest at the start of the dry season. The groups of hunters stalk the animals that flee from the fire. With sticks and hoes, they kill small animals such as squirrels, dwarf antelopes, snakes. They can all be eaten. It is an ancestral practice which has many negative aspects, so it does enrich the soil with phosphates, salts, and nutrients. After the fire, the forest starts to come back to life, while the hamatan, the dry, dusty wind from the north, envelops it in thick fog. The trees take on fantastical shapes, further reinforcing the belief in magic in this land of spells and sorcery, full of mystical and esoteric symbols. From out of this mysterious atmosphere of the jungle rises like a ghost the enormous dome of the Basilica of Yamasukuro. It is a copy of the Vatican, a colossal place of worship in the middle of the forest. 1,500 men working day and night took three years to build it. It was the dream of a devout man, the first president of the Ivory Coast, Félix Oufouet Bonnier, who ruled from the time of independence in 1963 until he died in 1993. The holy complex, which includes an exact copy of St. Peter's Square, including Bernini's colonnade, was completed in 1989 and consecrated by Pope John Paul II in 1990 during his third visit to this country. 
Oufoué Bagnier squandered a great part of his fortune on this titanic construction, which he then donated to the Vatican, the present owners of this basilica, now maintained by the Curia of Rome. 128 Doric columns, 30 meters in height, seven hectares of marble brought from Italy, France, and Spain, and 7,400 square meters of stained glass windows make up this monumental construction. But it's always empty because the people of this region have other beliefs, other gods to worship. In this drawing, we can appreciate the dimensions of this basilica on the right compared to the Vatican on the left. One of its 24 large stained glass windows represents the arrival of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. Kneeling at the side of the donkey which carries Jesus, we can see Oufoué Boignet dressed as an apostle. On the left, wearing tunics from that time, the architect of the basilica, the Lebanese Pierre Fakouri, and his assistants welcome the Lord. There is sitting room for 7,000 people. Each pew has its own loudspeakers and air conditioning grill. Beneath the baldequin, presiding over the gigantic presbyter, a cross of solid gold weighing 50 kilos tries unsuccessfully to convince the Africans that Jesus Christ was just as poor as they are. Deepest ancient Africa is still to be seen everywhere. Though external influences are greater each day, tradition always remains behind any sign of modernity. The people continue to attend their own religious and cultural events such as this one, the Jongla. These young girls brushing past the knife blades without moving a single muscle are given by their families to be trained in this dangerous discipline. They believe they are possessed by a spirit which protects them and makes them brave enough to perform these displays. Each group of jonglers moves from village to village, putting on performances. When the girls are seven or eight, they leave the group and return home with the money they have earned. 